following Prince Harry's stance against Fortnite, right? You made an appearance on Fox Business talking about the benefits of gaming. Before we get into the actual benefits, though, what was he saying, and how do you think it's made an impact on media at large? Yeah, I will tell you, it was a little shocking when I see my face against Prince Harry. So, like, taking on royalty, it's not a big part of my strategy here. But, you know, hey, he's he's a soon-to-be father, um, so I'm sure he's paying attention differently to things. But I recall watching him grow up, and um, I do believe he was a video gamer himself. I don't really worry too much about this. I think it's a very um, outdated view um, a narrow view about um, anyone can identify with any form of entertainment or life interests that, you know, too much of a, a good thing could turn into some bad things if you mm -hmm. don't have an imbalance. But mm -hmm. um, I think it's just one of many people who have tried to identify and pick apart gaming and really just need to open their mind about um, how gaming has transformed, how social and collaborative it is, and, and kind of start to form a new narrative. Yes, indeed, and especially because esports has tapped into the big mainstream scene. A lot of these uh, thoughts, myths, concerns are coming up a lot more and more. But with that said, there are benefits to gaming, and we've seen it time and time again. Uh, what do you think are some of the benefits to esports and gaming at large? Yeah, I mean, I think esports, it's... it's Skype, why do you fail us so often? Oh man, it's well so we're gonna bad. check chat, sorry guys. Like I wish there was a way we could use Discord, it would've been so cool. I think Prince Harry got the UK to tap in to ruin our stream. They're like, she's bad mouthing the parliament. Get the Skype feed, make it go down. <laughs> and then it was like a British, I said finish, huh? <laughs> <laughs> right, Mr. Bakwagak in the chat saying, I thought we were like two decades removed from political figures trying to ban games and stuff. This is real life, my friend. This is real life, I promise. Yeah, and honestly, I mean, we've seen it with so many different genres. Like, I brought up the correlation between hip-hop and mainstream, right? Right. Same thing they did with hip-hop when it started to get bigger and people were paying attention. Then they're like, oh, this is bad. We're seeing this with esports and gaming. But we just got word that Anne is back. Yes? Boom. There we go. No? Uh. Ah. Uh. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh, oh my gosh! <laughs> Almost at her back. It's like a scene in Anthem. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's just unfortunate for one second. Oh no, yeah, Mr. Barkley got keep our break. Oh Ooh, no! What was that? I don't know. Was it's that? not our fault, guys. It's, it's not okay. our fault. No, I mean, I, I think she already had a good point, right? She was leading. She was saying, "Yeah, I think he probably played games himself." I feel like anybody that grew up in the past. 20, 30 years, yeah. has been playing games at some point in their childhood. It's just like something you grow up doing. You, you may not have owned a gaming console the yeah. entire way, but you've come across it, and it's not necessarily harmful in nature, you know what I mean? Yeah, and there are successful people that have grown up playing video games often. Even LeBron James played video games a lot, and I don't think it's hurt him in any shape or right. form. Right, and it's like, like she said, the points that she brought up already, I completely agree with, right? Moderation is key in everything. If you're not if you're overly committed to literally anything in your life, if you sit too much, you will die. <laughs> like, it's bad. All right, third time's the charm, guys. Let's see. There it is. She didn't freeze. Okay, so here's the thing. Let's hope this lasts. Um, it is proving that resiliency is an important skill even when you're trying to use Skype. <laughs> uh, so no different with gaming. You got to dust yourself off, off and not give up and, and find new strategies. So we're trying to find new strategies here in the Super League content studio as well. <laughs> well, thank you for your efforts, and yes. but like you were saying, right? So, what? Wh how have we seen examples of gaming leading to increased interest in STEM fields as well? Because you were just talking about how gaming isn't necessarily harmful, but can actually be beneficial. Yeah, the benefits that go uh, with it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I always think my gut reaction when I saw uh, Microsoft buy Minecraft is the EDU, the education component. You know, Minecraft is increasingly used in schools as the basis for STEM learning. We attach scholarships to a lot of our youth league esports products because parents and educators can see that their kids are learning about the basics of coding, 3D modeling. So to me, those fundamentals are baked into a lot of different games as you're kind of inside the game and changing the functions of the game to kind of create different experiences. And of course, as we've talked about so many times in, in different kind of esports panels, you know, it's a great indicator when you see so many universities offering esports scholarships. The lion's share of these players are not going to turn into pros, no different than if someone plays Division One tennis 
or um, basketball, they're necessarily going to make it to the pros. But it is a pretty good marker for computer science and other advanced degrees. Yes, and there is quite a lot of misinformation out there when it comes to gaming and whether it's from a personal take or anything like that. But what is science saying about gaming specifically? Yeah, no, it's a good question. I mean, there's certainly more and more studies being done that show about vision enhancement um, with gaming. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the, the resiliency side and even intention spans um, that are greater. So again, there's a lot of myths that need to be debunked about those positive impacts of it. And again, I'll just keep coming back to now if you add a social component around it. You know, there's this, um, this narrative, as I was starting to allude to earlier before my first freeze on camera, um, and it's an important one, um, gaming is highly social. Um, and no different than if somebody wants to physically go on a date or go to a sporting event or go to an art gallery or go see a movie. When you take those things out of home and you do them with friends or in a different type of environment, it has all kinds of social benefits that lead to better life outcomes.